business of biotech um, involves bringing together multiple strands, science, management, IP, finance, and increasingly the need to handle and analyze large data sets. Now, currently, early career professionals tend to focus on one strand or the other. They're coming highly specialized, and we certainly need people like that in the biotechnology industry. But it's also important to have individuals who can straddle different fields and uh, can therefore help cement specialists from the other strands into teams. There's a lot to learn, and the sooner we start, the better. And I think young people are often more innovative and willing to take risks, so I think that it's right to focus on them. Uh, it follows from what I said that it's not strictly necessary, but it's desirable, certainly if they're to be the kind of people who are going to end up in major roles of orchestrating different strands. There are, of course, many problems ranging from obtaining management and finance, um, but I'd like to focus on two issues that seem to me to be fundamental. The first is a, a mismatch of time scales. Unlike information technology, biotechnology is a business that takes a long time to deliver the product. But at the heart of biotechnology business is short-termism. Uh, whether it's VCs with short-term expectations for financial returns or, for that matter, patents that are close to expiring by the time a product can be developed. I've often wondered whether more money would be forthcoming for the development of antibiotics if those products could be granted a longer patent life. Well, I think on the emerging trends, uh, one emerging trend over the last few years has been the development of the whole field of immune oncology, uh, which is a way of using your Im immune system to tackle diseases, particularly diseases such as cancer. And uh, this is certainly creating a great deal of interest in large pharmaceutical companies. I think another area um, that's becoming a very big trend is data handling putting together vast data sets which will come from uh, genomic databases, but also proteomic databases, lifestyle databases. And I think that's another very big area which is going to have massive impact. I think, I think those are the trends, but, or the trends I'm most interested in. But um, I, I think there are other issues that we need to face. And I think one of the big issues is pricing. Quite often biotech products and services are extremely expensive. And I do wonder whether there's enough money out there to um, fully take advantage of them. Um, I think it's a particular problem where you've got uh, products in, in which there hasn't even been a significant investment. For example, the repurposing of Daraprim recently, which came under so much flack. But that's just the tip of an iceberg. That's the obvious tip. There are other things where somehow the returns, the financial returns expected, are not commensurate with the extent of investment um, that's gone into it. And I think that's not right. Well, we can all dream, but I think we should be realistic. I think it'll probably look much like now, except somewhat richer and healthier on average. Um, I think the issue is not what we can technically do, because there's a huge amount we could do with biotech if we let it rip, particularly in the agri-biotech business. Um, the issue is more what we are going to choose to do with it. And I think sometimes we're not really up to making those decisions. I've certainly shown in the past we're not up to making those decisions. Instead we tie ourselves up in all kind of false ethics.
I mean, probably my most inspiring mentor was my PhD supervisor, a chap called Brian Hartley, um, who was one of the very early uh, scientists interested in biotechnology, or let's say modern biotechnology. He was one of the founders of Biogen, and he's for many years has had an interest in the production of alcohol um, from um, bacteria. Um, he was inspiring because he um, was very keen that we don't focus on interesting questions. He said, interesting be damned, focus on something important. There's loads of interesting stuff out there, get to grips with something that matters. And that's actually been very important for me in my career. I've tried to focus on that rather than things that purely satisfy some intellectual curiosity. Brian also had um, huge optimism and also what we used to call northern grit. So the recipe I think I learned from him for overcoming setbacks is always look on the bright side and work through them. It's not kind of manners that maketh man, but how a man overcomes failure. Uh, it was um, an education school of hard knocks. I was looking at the newspapers today and I saw an article that said that many entrepreneurs had not completed university or perhaps not even attended. And that one other common feature is that they have been able to overcome setbacks. And I think that's spot on.